Hey, what's going on, everyone? Akeem here, and joining me are the writers for Spider-Man No Way Home, Chris McKenna and Eric Summers. How you doing, gentlemen? Doing well. Thanks for having Good, us. Good, thank you. Of course. Yes, now, you know, we have a lot to discuss, so I'm just going to stop. start right off the top. Uh, now that everyone knows that Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield's Spider-Mans are in the movie with Tom Holland's, uh, can you explain how you went about including them in a way that uh, was meaningful to Tom's storyline, uh, also giving us some new information uh, about what those Spideys have been up to? It was obviously going to be a challenge from the get-go. We took uh, probably, there were sort of two angles we had to approach it from. One was, what do we need to accomplish for our Peter in this scene? These guys need to talk to him and they need to get him from A to B. So what is it that they could say that would do that? And we didn't want them to have the same exact attitude or opinion that would be sort of monolithic and, and boring. So they have to be coming from different places and yet they have to help him change his mind. They have to help him decide not to give up and, and to try to continue the plan he, he had and continue pursuing May's ethic. At the same time, we're coming up from the other angle of these Spider-Men and you know, where are these guys in their lives? If they got pulled, when they got pulled into this movie, what, what condition were they in? What were they doing? What was their mindset? And the, the end of The Last Amazing Spider-Man uh, had this really nice speech from Gwen about staying hopeful and everything. And, and immediately it became interesting to us, well, what if Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man, if his Peter Parker couldn't do it? He couldn't keep that hope. It was He was too hurt by what happened. And so we that led us to the attitude that we found for him and then we also had to think long and hard about where Toby's Spider-Man would be. And that was a more difficult question because more time has come gone by and what has that guy been up to? And then of course the actors had had opinions about what their Spider-Man, what their Peter Parkers should have been up to and, and where they'd be coming from as well. So it was just taking all those factors and it was just a lot of conversations and a lot of writing. I would say we did that scene, we must have written that scene at least 10 times. The whole concept of the movie, you know, it all seemed like this uh, crazy uh, wish that, like Tom Holland's, uh, it, it came true, and then we were trying to deal with suddenly uh, the world opening up and falling on our head. All these, all these worlds. So, you know, our, I think our main mantra all the way through was just make sure with every character coming from um, a different universe uh, that we write up to them, and that they're not just doing cameos, not just curtain calls that we are actually being true to that character, where he was coming from his story and um, and taking it uh, and moving it along, making sure that, that each of them had as much of a story as we could give them. And obviously with Toby and Andrew, um, you know, that was the craziest dream come true that the two of them would actually then, you know, come into this world and then we get, get to continue their stories. And obviously we had to do it in a meaningful way for our Peter and they're all in different paths, you know, I mean, the multiverse, they're all sort of echoes of each other and they've, they've gone through similar experiences. And so um, we wanted to be true to where Toby and Andrew were and make sure that then they come at this moment and are um, servicing Peter and helping him like two older brothers who've been through the same um, trauma and same experiences and trying to, at the same time, you know, heal their own wounds or, or service the, you know, serve their own role um, in, in his story. And so that everyone goes back home changed by this. It's, it's not just the cavalry coming in. They, they actually come in and, and affect the story and the story affects them. Yeah, that, that's what I love the most uh, uh, about, about their addition to, to the movie is the fact that it wasn't just a cameo. Like they, their, their presence there was very meaningful to Tom Holland's uh, Spider-Man. Now, was this always the vision that you all had uh, for for Toby and Andrew, or was this something that kind of like materializes? You know, the process went on. When we, you know, we all got together, and this is all a collaborative experience with uh, effort with you know Kevin Feige and Amy Pascal and John Watts and many more, and we're just all working together. Um, off of Far From Home, we knew that we were going to start in a particular place where his identity has been revealed to the world. It was constantly evolving. Once we knew we had um, Toby and Andrew, obviously we have a Peter Parker, MCU Peter Parker story to tell. And we knew we'd be holding off on, on Toby and Andrew till the third act, but 
yeah, we definitely talked a lot about how they would be coming in, so it didn't feel like it was just deus ex machina, that they were coming in in a way that we could have a lot of fun of Toby and Andrew not knowing each other, meeting each other for the first time, uh, then going to help Peter, who was on the brink of making, you know, the worst decision of his life, which is, you know, uh, betraying May's uh, mantra of uh, with great power comes great responsibility. Yeah. Now I, I want to talk about some of the villains and and kind of like Tom Holland's uh, Peter Parker, how he kind of interacted with them. You know, I find it kind of fascinating how uh, how you all chose to bring you know all of the villains together by essentially putting them like in group therapy with Spider Man as like their sponsor. Because uh, so, you, you honestly, you could have just had like Spider Man hunt them down and beat them up, uh, but you didn't. So, uh, could you talk about like, uh, you know, why you took this more empathetic approach as it pertains to the villains? Peter Parker is the one who took that approach. I mean, that's the way Peter Parker is. And as soon as we, as soon as we arrived at this kind of story, and we knew that we had these villains, and that it was possible they would be sent back. Very quickly, the team, I don't know whose idea it was, but very quickly the team arrived at the idea that, you know, what he doesn't want to send them back. That's not what Peter would do. That's not consistent with his ethic, with the lessons that May has taught him. And so it was just natural that, that that's what Peter would decide to do. He's going to do something else. He's going to try to fix them. He's going to try to make, make this right for everybody. And then, of course, he's going to pay a price for it. I mean, the whole movie thematically is about Peter Parker mm -hmm. um, torn between the code that Aunt May has um, instilled in him and not having to live up to this difficult code. But the larger ideology that she's instilled with him is like, it's not that easy. You're just going to send them back. And he, even at the homeless shelter, he's saying, don't worry. This is what Doctor Strange wants. I know what I'm doing. And it's only when he finds out that they're going to die that that voice that has been in his head since he's a child told him that he can't let this happen. So that's the whole tension in the movie is he's constantly trying to get what he wants, but he's always got that 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 moral, um, you know, that that pesky moral mission that that has been instilled in him of, by May, um, you know, keeping him from getting what he wants. So. The empathy is inherent. Uh, it, it's been, you know, and that's why May May is the is his moral guide, you know, more than anyone else in in his universe, and that's why this whole, you know, as we started realizing as we were writing, making it, and with you know, with Watts and Amy and Kevin, like this really is him living up to that code of with great responsibility comes great power for the first time, because for the first time he actually ha it comes with sacrifice true sacrifice and the person who instilled it in him is the one who sacrifices her life because she believes in it so much i kind of want to i want to throw things to uh to the fans although i'm a fan myself but uh we we scoured uh our social medias for fan questions uh, and this first one is coming from trent sinning uh on our youtube channel who is asking the question uh what happened to all of the physical evidence showing that peter parker is spider-man after Strange's final spell. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, we deliberated a lot. And, you know, is it gonna be like a uh, uh, back to the future kind of thing? Or are people gonna be disappearing from photos? Are, are physical objects gonna be disappearing? Or, you know, all, all these things. And like Chris said, ultimately we decided that it would take so much time and real estate in the film in the movie to explain all of that it would just detract from the emotion of it and that's what we really wanted to just focus on is okay some of these details we don't have room to fully explain but getting the emotion of it right understanding what he's sacrificing that these people he knows and loves are looking right at him and they don't know who he is and and then his decision to keep it that way for them to keep them safe, and that was what was the most important thing to communicate. It's a great, it's a great, it's a great question. Believe me, we have answers to it, but I don't think we're we should, we're not allowed to divulge that. So, but we have answers. 
Say no more, Chris. I look, Eric. Look, you got me. You said you mentioned Back to the Future. I'm, in my mind, I'm just going to use Back to the Future logic that people are disappearing in newspapers. That's what I'm going with. I'm a huge Back to the Future fan, so that's that's what I'm going with until we get the actual uh, answers. Uh, however long I'm down the line. Placeholder or explanation, and then you can you can work with that until <laughs> until you get new information. Were Toby and Andrews Peters affected by the spell, um, as well in their respective universes? Or is that another one of those questions where it's like, we're going to have to win? I, okay, okay. Great question. Fair enough. Believe me, we talked about it. We actually had ideas for, you know, ways of showing the effects. But if there were any, I mean, believe me, these are all great questions. Yeah, Chris and I even were tempted, you know, we wanted to maybe to pitch a tag where you got to see something, you know, oh, what would happen if this guy goes back and, and this has changed or, you know, wouldn't that be fun? And But again, it's... Um, we didn't want to distract from the emotion of what was going on with with our Peter Parker. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to I want to talk about the uh, the final fight scene that we uh, that we witness in the movie. The Statue of Liberty is the backdrop for for it. Uh, can you give us like a bit of a backstory, or if there is a backstory behind uh, Lady Liberty holding Captain America's shield, and and what was the significance uh, behind that space being used for the final fight? I, I assume that was John's idea to do it, you know, some place iconic. There's a running gag in, in you know, in the MCU Spider-Man movies where Peter uh, tends to uh, destroy landmarks or be a part <laughs> of destroying them. So um, it felt like, uh, on that level, felt uh, like a fun idea. Um, obviously, the idea that, you know, uh, you know, that particularly John was really hitting on, you know, early on was the idea of second chances and, you know, uh, Statue of Liberty definitely re represents uh, thematically second chances. I think originally in Statue of Liberty was that copper, you know, so people have talked mm -hmm. in the past about like, you know, re re you know, uh, returning it to its like, sort of original copper look, but I, then I think, I don't know, it was I don't know whose idea it was to put, you know, oh, it was going to be sort of rebranded too with, uh, you know. Captain yeah, I don't know if that or... came from a creative conversation uh, with the team or, again, if it was maybe inspired by a piece of artwork, you know. I mean, they, they have these incredible artists doing uh, concept paintings uh, before we even get into pre-visualization of things. And it might have just been something that one of them came up. They're so creative. But... Uh, once that idea was was out there, everyone grabbed onto it because it seemed like a, a neat idea that maybe the nation has decided to put a Captain America shield on the statue after everything that's happened, and that and then of course the fun that that once again Peter would come along and uh, completely wreck this <laughs> national <laughs> monument. And that rebooting of like, eh, maybe we don't need Captain Cap's shield on Statue of Liberty. Maybe there's a way to sort of restore things. And it, you know, so that, that final shot that John does, you know, sort of like the Statue of Liberty restored without the shield um, to a new day. And, but also, you know, so another another person whose life was restored by the sacrifice that Peter makes um, and the world doesn't know it. Now there was, there was concept art that was trending on Twitter uh, featuring uh, a fight scene uh, between Mysterio and Doctor Strange uh, done by Andrew Reeder. Um, who did concept art for, for the movie. Now, obviously, you know, that didn't happen in the final version of the movie. Uh, so uh, what's your reaction to seeing that, that particular image? Have you all seen it? I, I, the way these movies work, obviously, they have such an incredible arsenal. You know, we've worked on a few of these now. Like, they'll bring you concept art. You're like, wow, that, someone thought this up idea, and now this is going to be a set piece. So we, when we didn't know what the movie was quite going to be, and we were playing around with a lot of different ideas, and you're dealing with the multiverse, and a lot of different ideas get thrown around, um, people are brilliant artists are taking their own ideas, are taking inspiration from the director and the producers, um, and making incredible artwork. I, I, I am familiar with what you're talking about. I mean, look, I will say when you open up the multiverse, you get a lot of conversations where anything can happen. We were we were kicking around different. I mean, that was not multiverse related, and we were kicking things around. And then you know, I think Kevin really loved the idea of maybe doing a tag that had something to do with that multiverse. And you know, you introduce a oh man, wow, maybe you see a character from one of the other movies, and 
but that was just going to be like a down the road tag and you know and then we there were certain obstacles to the stories that we were pursuing before we came up with this story but i remember being across the table from kevin and Kevin goes, I think, you know, if we'd hit a few obstacles for some various reasons with the other stories, and he said, what if we, what if we just, that, that tag idea, what if that was the movie? What if that was the act break instead of just waiting for the tag? And I remember in, now looking at the movie, it's almost like it was that aha moment, but also it was like all of those characters at the end of the movie that start coming through. Because it's overwhelming. <laughs> you just go, oh, yes. wait, now the sky is the limit. I mean, it's infinity is the limit and it means there's no limit. And it's overwhelming because you really have so many different things you can now do with that concept. So it was the lightning bolt that got us all going, yes, that's that's it. That's the concept. That's the concept. Can we really do that? But are they going to want to do that? But then when it started actually coalescing, when, you know, feelers were put out and actors were like yeah i'm game for that when then it became this overwhelming thing because you're like okay this is the reality now and you have to you can't just be swimming in a million characters you have to now be choosing characters wisely and making sure that they don't overwhelm the story and 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 peter himself and that's it's just like a crystallized memory in my head of when kevin came up with that and it just was a whole sea change for the whole creative process because that was that became the concept of the movie we had so much fun pitching on like who should you see you know whose yep. silhouette will you see what shape will you see or can they start to come through or you know i mean that's when yeah just being a fan really comes out in your wish list now at the end of the film you know we see glimpses of a new spidey suit which looked freaking dope I, I loved it so much now can you explain some of the features if you know of any uh, of the suit and and how it might uh, affect future Spider-Man stories. Super sparkles. <laughs> it's you know, it's, <laughs> I love that blue that they chose. I mean, it's right out of the comic books. It's amazing. Uh, no, I no. We got. I mean, you see a sewing machine on the table, and uh, so you know he's made his own suit. But I don't know. I you know everything that's implied in that to me uh, says uh, uh, this is a different Peter and a different Spider-Man than we've seen before. Yeah, I mean, we we really like the idea of Peter moving into a new phase of his life where he doesn't necessarily have the help of a Tony Stark and all the access to all that technology and all of these things. So we'll, time will tell exactly what's in that suit, but I think, I think people can probably look forward to a different kind of a different kind of suit and a different, you know, a different kind of level of technology. But maybe, well, I gotta say, maybe Peter's, maybe Peter's got something stashed away somewhere and it's full of gadgets. Who knows? Ooh. <laughs> well, the suit was definitely sparkly. Now, I, one final, I know I lied. One, one final, final question I got to talk about. I, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention this. Uh, the end credit scene uh, where we see a, a little piece of symbiote that's left behind. What are the implications? What, what, what was the intent behind that? Uh, it was a fun idea that uh, the the sixth, uh, if there's a, if the, if, it is, if if he was the sixth of, the, of this movie, Sinister Six, that he gets stuck in a bar and doesn't get out of there, but maybe he leaves a little something behind. Uh, again, we're not masters of of that course of that next adventure, but it leaves well, the door open for, for possibilities, as opposed to just seeing him go back and and not seeing any symbiote, you know, so there's, it just uh, allows for some exciting possibilities in the future. Well, uh, I'm, I'm gonna hit the forums and start speculating and theorizing and drop some of my own uh, based on everything that was said here. Uh, Chris McKenna, Eric Somers, thank you both so much uh, for responding to the fan questions that, you know, we've been we've been craving answers to. See what I did there, craving okay. answers? There were good questions. <laughs> No, there are great questions, so and I hope you know that we're not trying to be coy, other, you know, just there's certain things that we don't know, and there's some, certain things that there's a, you know, as we always joke, but half jokingly, there's a there's a Marvel satellite, you know, stationed over us. each of our heads, <laughs> <laughs> and just waiting for the right moment where our loose lips uh, sink our That's right. <laughs> I think you've given me and the rest of the fans just enough to kind of keep us, keep us on that hook for 
years to come, I guess. So thank you once again. Uh, thanks so much. Sure, thank it's you. Been a pleasure. It's a and, pleasure. And a privilege. Thanks. Peter, you're struggling to have everything you want while the world tries to make you choose.